You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, mommy makeovers. With us, we have San Diego's plastic surgeon, Dr. Sadrian. Dr. Sadrian, welcome to the program. Thank you. Welcome. So am I saying it right? Is it Dr. Sadrian or Dr. Sadrian? The uh, true pronunciation is Sadrian, but most people say Sadrian. It's easier for them to pronounce okay, it as Sadrian. Now, I've wanted to get you on the show for quite some time. I told that to Dr. Smoot, too, who you work with. Yeah. But I, we actually talked about, about four or five years ago, and yes. I said, I told you today, I'm, I'm glad you finally came to your senses and decided to come on the show. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. Good, good. So, <laughs> mommy makeover is a big topic. Uh, but before we get into, and I know you brought some photos, tell me a little bit about your practice. I mean, who's your typical patient? Because you do more than mommy makeovers. Who's a typical patient? What are the procedures you do? So I really don't have a typical uh, patient, Randy. You know, in my practice, I'm a general board certified plastic surgeon. I do everything. I do facelifts, neck lifts, eyebrow lifts, eyelid surgery, nose surgery, which is one of the areas I really love to do. I do a lot of revision rhinoplasties. Um, I do breast surgery. I do breast lifts, breast augmentations, redo breast surgeries. I do tummy tucks. I do a lot of mommy makeovers, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, liposuction, body lifts, arm lifts. So I'm a general plastic surgeon. I do a lot of things, but I also have some areas that I really am interested in, and mommy makeover is one of them. Mommy makeover is hot. Do they call it that, by the way? Do the women say I need a mommy makeover? Mm, it's, a, it's a term that's become, you know, kind of popular, but it's kind of a loosely defined term. It doesn't necessarily mean just, you know, people think of it as a tummy tuck or a tummy tuck and a breast surgery. To me, it's anyone who, after pregnancy, wants to look better. They've got some things that they want to improve. To me, that's a mommy You say makeover. women still want to look pretty. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who doesn't? Who okay. Doesn't? Okay, good. Now, your background in training, uh, John Hopkins, I mean, you, a unique background in training. Tell me a little bit about that. I trained both as an oral maxillofacial surgeon and a plastic surgeon. And so that was at John, Ho John Hopkins? My uh, training oral maxillofacial was at Johns Hopkins, yes. Okay. And uh, I'm probably one of the only handful of people in the country who has trained like that. It uh, gives me some edges when it comes like to... Like what? Like what? Well, when it comes to facial surgery, you know, I've been trained to kind of move people's faces and jaws and, and three-dimensionally put things back together again. So I, I feel very, very comfortable when I do facial surgery. Okay, good, good, good. And so did you always want to be a plastic surgeon? Because you never practiced as an oral I Correct, surgeon. correct. I never practiced as an oral surgeon, but towards the end of my training is when I became more excited about doing, you know, cosmetic type surgery and, and reconstructive surgery for the rest of the body as well. And uh, there were people who would do a quick fellowship afterwards for a one-year training kind of a thing and then become a plastic surgeon. I decided I'm going to go the full route, so I went through, did more general surgery, plastic surgery, full three years in a uh, very well-trained well, pro well uh, training program. So, Okay, good, good. So now, uh, so mommy makeovers, what defines it? If you had to say what defines a mommy makeover, what is it? Well, again, the mommy makeover is anything that after pregnancy someone wants to improve on. So okay. generally, someone who's had a couple of children, uh, all of a sudden they look at themselves, they don't like the way their skin is, they have a pooch in their tummy, they don't like their breasts, they've got some sagginess of the breast, they may have lost some volume in their breast. Uh, overall, anything that they feel like they need to improve, they want their body back, they want their old body back. So what are the age ranges of the patients that you see? You know, it really, it really age, it ranges from anywhere in their 30s, 40s, 50s, even 60s. Really? You know, uh, some people, right after having had a couple of children, they immediately want to, you know, change things, improve things. Uh, I get patients who come in and say, you know what, I used to look this way, I'm exercising, I'm doing everything that I can, I just am not getting there, I need some help. Um, I have people who, you know, they've had a couple of children, now the kids are out, they're out of the house, uh, now it's time for them, they want to do something for themselves. So it really varies, it, it all has to do with when someone looks at themselves and they say, you know what, I want to change something. I want to improve something. It's time for me. Then they usually come and see me. And do you see, and we've talked, uh, that you see transformations. I mean, when it's all done. Absolutely, yes. You say this is like a new lease on life. I I'm putting words in your mouth maybe there. But, I mean, you say it's huge transformations. It is. It is. Like, and what it, do they say? And, you know, I mean, I have a patient, for example, I have a patient who um, came to me and said, you know, I never used to go to the beach. I was afraid of dating anymore. I didn't want my partner to see my body. It would always, always turn the light down. I, I was really afraid to show my body. So we, we discussed what are some of the uh, possibilities. We talked about uh, the things that were uh, important to her. And so I see her six months after her surgery. She's already dating. She, they're getting ready to get married. She's working out like a, a horse. She's okay, doing all okay. sorts of things. She's got a totally new wardrobe. She feels fantastic when she walks into a room now. Um, it's improved her life. It's improved her career. 
Um, she feels great about herself. So it is, it is a life changing, life changing uh, procedure. Okay. Now you have photos. Let's take I a do. look at, I mean, these are very dramatic photos. I'll um, give you some examples here, Randy. This is a, a patient who came to see me, and what she did really not like about herself was um, she's got a big pooch for the tummy. She's got a lot of fatty areas around her abdomen, her waist. Um, she, if we look at her back view, she's got a lot of rolls under her um, bra area. Um, and she's trying her best, trying to improve, and she's working out and so forth, but she's just not getting where she so wants to So on the consult, what do they say? Well... I don't like the way I look. I want to look the way I did before. I want my old body back. So, you know, let's, let's look at the front view, for example. You know, when I look at a patient like this, you know, first, obviously, I want to know what their goal is. What are they there for? What is the goal? What do they want to change? Um, so I look at their total body. I look at their height. I look at their waist. I look mm -hmm. at their uh, symmetry. Some people have a longer torso. Some people have a shorter torso. I look at their belly buttons. I look at the amount of pooch, the amount of fat that they have in that area. Uh, if we look at their back, we can kind of look at the overall silhouette, the contour. Um, so are you doing a tummy tuck and a light bulb? Well, least? somebody like this is going to need a combination of things. I okay. look at the, the, the different options. Some people may have a little bit of a pooch, fatty pooch, and for them, maybe lipo is all they need. Some people come in and they really need a lot of skin removed. They also need lipo to contour their waist, their shape. Um, so what it did may she be, need? She like, actually... You, I mean, do you, when you t do that consult, do you look at it and go, this is going to be great? Yes. You yes. can see that in results. Yes. yes, because, and I will show you some before afters that are really, I think most people are not going to be able to this is the same patient. Okay. So if we look at her, she was a combination patient. Look at the difference there, Randy. Same patient, front views. This is after doing liposuction and a tummy tuck. But it's all about the way that I do the tummy tuck to make the difference. Okay. This is her in her jeans. She looks fantastic. All right. Now, the, her belly button, these pictures are, Doesn't you know... Doesn't look like the same person, by the way. It doesn't. And most people really would say, you know, are you sure this is the same person? Absolutely same per person. No touch-ups or anything. No photo tricks. But look at her front view, Andy. If you look at her waistline, look how much more contoured that waist is. Yeah. Look at her overall shape. She looks a lot younger. If you look at That's the before, point. if we look at the side by side, if you look at the before picture, that looks like an older patient. That yeah. looks like somebody who's okay. older. You look at this, this is a body of a much younger patient. So this is a tummy tuck. That's and a tummy lipo tuck combo. with lipo combo. So where's the incisions? Well, that's a very good point. I always, with a patient, decide where we're going to place the incisions. My idea is always as low as I can go. Realistically, I want you to like keep them it, low. I like them low. I like to hide it as much as possible. So when they're wearing a swimsuit, etc., it's it's well hidden. But we decide. You know, in the old days, I used to do the ones that were like high cuts. So we tried to actually match that. Now most people wear you know pants that are a little bit lower. So I like to keep it as low as possible. With the patient, I decide where we want to place the incisions. I try to keep them as low as possible. With their belly button, there are different styles and different types of belly button. We choose, you know, exactly what's going to give them the best. I like to hide the scars as much as possible. So now these are the patients that, these are the people that now, after all of this, are wanting to go to the beach. They want to take trips. They want to be seen on the beach. They want to show some of their body. They really want to wear clothes that they've never been able to wear for a long, long period of time. Interesting. Now that, that rear view, that's her too? This is her. This is the rear view. Okay. Um, and again, if we look at the contour, if we look at her waist, if we look at how much of the it's volume absolutely is Absolutely hard gone, to believe there. Same patient. It is, that is the goal. That is the goal to make them as contoured and as nice as we can. Now imagine her now again in her clothes, in right. something that really fits her nicely. They typically will start to eat better. They will start to exercise like they haven't before. It's it's the the goal. The overall goal is I'm just part of the solution. I provide the surgical improvement, but to get the best result overall, they need to continue to, to exercise. They need to do their good diet, nutritional. Counseling. So let me take a look at the side by side over there. I, I we haven't looked at this photo yet. Okay, so this one, and this is the same woman, right? Exactly. Same people, yes. Stretch marks, things like that, with a tummy tuck, you're able to get rid of. Yes. The, How? The, How? Nice, How? the nice thing is that, you know, typically where I place my incisions is we go above the pubic area or sometimes even within the pubic area. So literally from that area to where the belly button is, I'd like to get rid of as much of that skin as I possibly can. A lot of the stretch marks that are from the belly button down, we can get rid of. Some patients come in and really all they have is stretch marks and a lot of skin. 
So essentially, there are different things that we have to look at. You know, after pregnancy, the, st the stomach tends to push out a little more. The muscles in the midline sometimes tend to spread a little bit more. They get separated more. So, the so like the six-pack area? Correct. Separates. Correct. Correct. All right. So my goal is I want to see if I can bring them in together horizontally as much as I can to get horizontal tightening. I want to bring them down vertically, so like a curtain, we pull everything down as much as we can. And then furthermore, even around their waist, I tend to pull them in so they get even a better shape around their waist. So I tighten the muscles horizontally, that's what's going to give them that flat abdomen. And if you look at their um, profile, if you look at their front view, they, this is what gives them almost a worked out look. They get that six pack kind of look after this tightening. Um, what do they say when it's all over? Like this woman in particular, do you remember? Honestly, when they look, look at them, it's a big deal right here. It's a very big deal. And honestly, when they look at themselves afterwards, they sometimes cry. They are so happy about the change. This is a body that sometimes they didn't even have when they were younger. So on the consult, uh, what are some of their fears, questions? Like what are they worried about? Well, you know, everybody wants to know how much is it going to hurt. They okay. want to know how much, what's the downtime? How can they get back? How soon can they get back to their normal activities and so forth? Um, the truth is that um, this is big surgery and we go over some of the potential risks, complications. How all soon of those can they things. go back? How soon can they go back? Well, you know, I like, typically... Do you tell them a couple of weeks? I like to tell them, you know, at least 10 to 14 days. Take off 10 to 14 days. Do you ever have people after a mommy makeover that go back to work in like in four days, even oh, though you told yes. them not to? Oh, yes. I had a nurse from the hospital right next door to our office. She went back in a week. She was doing stuff that... It wasn't what I really wanted her to do, but that's the only time she had. She went back. Ideally, though, there are some patients who really want to relax. They want to take their time. If they can two to three, take if they can take two to three weeks, that's even more better. That's okay. ideal. All right. Now we talked about uh, this abdomen area, both combination liposuction, tummy tuck, breast surgery for people that have very saggy breasts. Correct. Let's talk about that Correct. for a moment. Well, along with what happens to the abdomen and the lower body, obviously a lot of times people lose their volume in their breasts. Sometimes the breasts become very saggy. So part of this, and this is a surgery that I can combine and do both at the same time, is to regain the fullness, regain the position of the uh, breast that they had. Um, so what I do is a lot of times I do either augmentation alone. I do a combination of augmentation, breast augmentation, and a lift. There are different types of lifts that we do. I discuss that fully with the patient, give them their options. And it all has to do with what do they want. Some people want to be back very, very normal, but they don't want to be very large. They want to look very, very natural. So what we do is we together come up with a size. We come up with a plan for how they can regain that. Some people really have a lot of breast tissue, but they really the breast position is not where they want it to be. So maybe they just need a lift. And now these bigger lift cases, with these mommy makeovers can be, I've been told, technically demanding. They are taking... So not all doctors are doing it the same way, Correct. obviously. Correct. Where do you think you stand as far as your techniques? Well, for me, honestly, I'm very, very comfortable combining and doing both at the same time. Okay. However, it all depends on how much you have to do and how long is the patient going to be under general anesthesia. That's the key for me. Their safety is the most important thing. If it's something that I feel like I can do within a time frame that I'm very comfortable with and I think they're going to be safe, then I will do it. If it's going to take too long or if they're very, very complicated or there may be some healing issues, et cetera, then I will recommend that we break it up, we stage it, we do whichever one's most important okay. to them once, and then we'll come back and do the other. Now, by the way, with, with uh, women that are watching this and for these mommy makeovers, do they bring, they come in with their partner or a spouse? A lot and of what times, do you recommend? Do you recommend that? Absolutely, absolutely. I think the more the merrier. If they can bring someone who's going to support them... Do they usually bring be, somebody? They do. A lot of times they do. Okay. Um, it depends, though, on if, if it's a patient who is really very, very uncomfortable with the way they look. Sometimes they will come with their partner or their husband. They will ask them to stay out while I'm doing the exam. Oh, so some of them haven't even looked at themselves. They don't even like to look at themselves in the they mirror. They don't look at themselves in the mirror. They don't, they don't. So we have to talk about realistically, what are our goals? What are we gonna be able to accomplish? And then it's very interesting, gradually through this whole healing process, how all of a sudden the same patient who didn't want anybody else to look at them now is sharing. Now they come okay. in, they'll show their breasts, they'll show their tummy, they'll actually be very, very happy to show other people. Even Do you have women that come in and say, doctor, I bet you've never seen anything this bad or, or something like that? Absolutely, absolutely. I had a patient the other day, Randy, she came in, she said, you know, doctor, you're going to see the worst you've ever seen before. 
Really? You she know, says She that. said okay. that. And when I examined her, to me, she was just the average sort of case. I've seen a lot worse than her. I've seen a lot better than her. Why she do you think they say the average. that? Well, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, they're, they, they're hidden. They don't go out to the beach. They're not seeing other people like themselves. Good point. Patients like that typically are not active. They're not, not going to wear a two-piece, to... obviously. They're not. So when they're not, they're not going to see other people like that. So it is amazing how many people think that. But do you this get excited, is, by the way? I mean, I mean, you're doing the consult, and you're bo you're going, boy, this is really going to be a great result. I, I mean, get, can you see it? You can really see it. That's exactly the point because I'm seeing through all of that. I, in my mind, I'm already imagining what this patient is going to look like after surgery. I, in my mind, I can see what I can do to improve them and and what kind of result they're going to get. Some people are not very good candidates for this kind of surgery. Some people need to lose weight before I do this kind of surgery. And I'll tell them that. I say, if, if this is what you need to do and we need to kind of take our time, you go do your exercises, work on your diet, improve your body, come back, see me in a year. When you've lost some weight, that will be the time where you're going to get the best result. Other patients, they can go tomorrow. They're ready to go. Okay, good. Now, you have other photos. Yes. Here's another example of... Uh, a, oh boy! Another patient who, um, in her clothing, nobody would believe that she actually had as much skin as she does. So, Randy, how old do you think this patient is? She looks like uh, 60s, 55, 60. This is a patient in her 50s. Okay. And uh, when I saw her, I thought, you know, we can make her look like she's in her 30s or 40s. Okay. We can improve her body so much. She looks great. Otherwise, she's very, very active. She does a lot of, uh, she works out and she does a lot of other things. Uh, but the skin was hidden under all of her clothing. So what'd you and, do for her? What'd you do for her? I mean, then how do you even break the news? Like, this is what we're going to do. Well, again, it's a combination of working with a patient and seeing what their goals and desires are. She has a lot of skin. She has some fat. She has some fat around her waist. She has some fat around her back. What Together, we decided to do was she wanted to have a very nice, tight abdomen, very, very tight. She wanted to have a curvaceous waist. She wanted to have a waist that would be we could see the outline of. And she had some areas that were fatty, poochy areas that she wanted to have improved. So I did a full tummy tuck. I brought her muscles, abdominal muscles together to make it very, very tight. One of the things that I do during surgery is I flex the patients because if somebody is standing up, all of us, when we're standing up, our stomach looks like it's much flatter. When we sit down, that's when we tend to get that pooch, that kind of hanging okay. pooch. So I do a lot of different things before the surgery. I have them lean forward. We do a lot of things that during the examination. And that's one of the things I did for her. I flexed her enough. And literally to get this kind of result, she was not wow. able to stand up straight for two to three weeks. Because so these are the looking. afters. These are the afters. Along with that, I did some liposuction of her waist. I did some liposuction of her back. Uh, look at the before and after side by side now. If you look at how flat that abdomen is, can you imagine how good that looks in clothing? Go look at the front view, Andy. Look at the shape of the waist. Look at how much skin was there before. Look at the shape Absolutely right now. Absolutely amazing. You so can, you so can actually... you, are you cutting out the skin? Yes. Is that, and how much of this? Well, you know, it's not uncommon. Like on her, for example. It's not uncommon. Sometimes I can take five, six inches off. So essentially, we decide how low can I make this incision, and then the space between that incision to up above the belly button, how much of that skin can I take away and pull in different directions to give her the best and tightest look. Okay, and, and you say this is an employee? This is yours. an employee actually, this is an employee of ours. And again, nobody could believe that she Walking had living proof. Absolutely. So, you know, we talk in terms of, uh, with Mommy Vancouver, we talk in terms of the ages, you know, in 60s and so forth. And you mentioned you thought this patient was in her 60s. Yeah. Now look at her after. And, you know, what do you think now? <laughs> Yeah, you what wouldn't do you think guess. Of? You would never be able to guess. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to guess. It is a younger, younger look. And now you do yes. men and women. Absolutely. Tummy tucks. Absolutely. I have a lot of patients who have lost a lot of weight, either on their own or through gastric bypass surgery or various other bariatric types of surgeries, which is very, very popular now. So are you and doing arms and things like that? Absolutely. Also? Absolutely. Absolutely. When, when someone goes through so much weight loss, there is a lot of skin that's left over. And it's a very, very, very uh, similar thing to uh, what I do with the tummy tucks. Here's another example of actually a male patient. Okay. And uh, this young man had lost a lot of weight. Interesting. And he has a lot of skin left over. His goal was he wanted to have so a bunch. So that's a guy. That's a guy. How old is that guy? He's uh, under 40. Interesting. So he had lost a lot of weight on his own and he exercises, he diets very well. He's, he's done everything that he can possibly do to look as good as he can, but he cannot get rid of the skin. Randy, look at the stretch marks. Look at how far those stretch marks go. Look at the folds of the skin. There's even a dimple in the skin. My goal is to get rid of all of that as much as I possibly can.
So when he comes to you, does, is he thinking tummy tuck or is he thinking lipo? Not always. You know, sometimes they come thinking that they want liposuction. Maybe it's just something can be done with just lipo alone. But when you have so much excess skin, there is no way that any kind of liposuction is going to take care of that. That's when the tummy tuck comes in. And my job is to really educate them, examine them carefully, decide what are some of the options that would work for them and give them those options. So you got, okay, so when you look at this, you see the stretch marks, you're saying those have got to go. Correct. Those are going to go. Correct. Correct. Okay. Let's take Correct. a look at this after. And oh then you goodness. look at the side view. You see looks how much like a young guy, he is. twenty year old. He looks like a lot younger. Yeah, exactly. Now the interesting like eighteen year old. The interesting guy. thing is some of these patients are actually quite young. They've lost a lot of weight, but they just look old because of the skin, because of the loose, saggy, kind of wrinkly skin. And then after surgery, they look a lot younger. Okay, so men or women, tell us something that guys need to know about, because a lot of men will say, you know, don't do anything. You're fine the way you are. Okay, give us some insights to what women want on these consults and what men need to know. You know, it's interesting, Randy. You know, when people reach their middle age, you know, guys, a lot of times, you know, they're looking for a new car, they want to get other toys, that kind of thing. Women want to look good. No matter what their age is, they still want to look good. They still want to look pretty. They still want to look pretty. And that's their goal. That's their goal. They want to look pretty. And that's what they want to talk about is what are some of the things that I can do? Sometimes they don't want to really have anybody know that they've had something done. So we do minor things. And sometimes they don't care. They want to do everything. They want to look a lot younger. They want to improve. Um, so it's all about what their goals are. What do they want? So with a mommy makeover, because we didn't talk about this. We talk a lot about the body. Uh, and you're, you're addressing the breast, the abdomen. What about the face for some of these people? Well, sometimes, as you know, as we age, the skin changes, the structures underneath change, the muscles change, the support changes, the volume in the face changes. So that's part of it as well. Sometimes patients have a lot of wrinkles and all they really need is maybe some Botox. Okay. Just something to smooth out some of those wrinkles and make them look better. Sometimes people have a lot of fat underneath their chin and they've developed kind of a big wobbly chin and basically what they want is they want some reduction of this. Maybe liposuction will work. Sometimes they may need a facelift. Neck so a little lift, bit of neck. A little bit of neck. Breast lift, tummy tuck or liposuction. Correct. And, uh, and now they feel, I mean, do you really see transformations? I've asked you this before, but I mean, are you ever surprised with the results where you say, wow, that's good? Sometimes, you know, when, when you see patients like some of the patients that we've looked at today, you know, I know my, my capability and I know I'm very, very comfortable with what I can do surgically, but sometimes, you know, I'm even surprised that, you know, they, they look as good as they do. Are you a perfectionist? I am. I am. One of the things that I hear all the time in the operating room from the nurses and my staff is, you know, sometimes, you know, I fuss and I take my time and I may be a little slower, but, you know, I always use the example when I do facelifts, for example, I say, well, would you want somebody, to me, the face is like a dress. Somebody's making a new dress for you. So would you want somebody who's going to take four hours to make that dress? Or do you want somebody who's going to take eight hours or going to take six hours? So for me, it's never a race. We take as much time as it's necessary. So they're, you're kind of fussy in the operating room and they go, oh boy, you know, Dr. Sadri and he takes uh, Correct. so long. Correct. So it's in the details, but I guess. It's in the details. Say. It is absolutely. There are a lot of people who do tummy tucks and there are a lot of people who do good tummy tucks. But in order to achieve the goal that you want and, and in order to get the shape that you want, you know, there, you have to go that extra mile. You have to do, it's all in the details. Even when it comes to the scars, you know, a lot of people come in and they say, you know, I don't want scars. I don't like the scars. This is a big cut from one hip to another hip. Yeah. You know, I don't want that. But there are ways that I can help improve it as best as I can. It's, it's all in the details, how we suture it, how we layer it. What do I do on the skin? How do we treat it afterwards? What does a patient do afterwards? What do I do with them afterwards? Uh, I follow my patients very, very carefully, very frequently, probably more than anybody I know. Usually I'll see them the next day, we'll see them in a couple of days, and we'll see them once a week, then we see them. I just, I'll continue to follow them for up to about a year after their surgery. Okay. And okay. Um, there are some differences in what we do to make a difference in how they look overall. So the procedures, I mean, the surgeries you're doing there. You have your own OR right there? We have our own uh, fully accredited quadruple A certified operating rooms. We have full recovery room. Uh, we use physician board certified anesthesiologists. Um, I, I'm, I'm not just saying this. I truly wouldn't do anything on a patient if I didn't feel comfortable enough doing it on my own family member. So their safety is the most important Do you feel like you're thing. an artist, by the way? Absolutely. Absolutely. Part of this is art. Part of it is science. How much art? There's a lot I of mean, art. I mean, technical skill. There's... I guess some guys don't belong being, you know, some people don't belong hairdressers. doesn't matter experience. Because you have a lot of experience. Correct. But, you know, I'm at least convinced that 
some people have it and some people don't. Do you feel like you have it? I mean, these are some of the best photos I've seen. Well, you know, the interesting thing, Randy, is even when, when I was done with my training, I felt very, very well qualified. My training program was excellent, et cetera, et cetera. But over the years, I keep getting better and better. Really? And okay. if I compare my results from, you know, 10 years ago versus my results from three years ago versus my result from the patient I did last week, I feel like my results are getting better. It's an, it's an ever-evolving kind of a thing. There are little subtle differences. There are the things that I do a little bit differently to get a little bit better results. Even the position of the belly button. Where do you position it? How flat is it? Where do you put the scars? Are the scars going to be inside the belly button? Is the scars going to be a big ring on the outside of the belly? Some people want to have an any belly button. Some people want to have an audi belly button. Um, the position of the scar on the body in general, how much do you bring things from below? How much do you pull from above? So judgment plays a role. Judgment plays a lot of role in this. Absolutely. And, and it is an art. You have to have the vision to see what, what you can accomplish. We're out of time. What do you want women to know about you? They've heard about you, you know, because your name is out there, Dr. Sa Sadrian, right? It's Sadrian, not Sadrian, Sadrian, but it's either way. They call either you way. both, right? You've learned to live with Sadrian, yeah. but Dr. Sadrian, what do you want them to know about you as a surgeon and about your results? Well, you know, I'm pretty much a very much down to earth kind of guy. I think it's very easy to talk to me. I'm very honest with them. I'll tell them the truth, even if I have to turn patients away. In fact, my staff sometimes thinks I turn more patients away than I actually accept them. I'm very picky. Did you have to tell them that? Is that what they well, say? Well, <laughs> you know, exactly, exactly. Okay. But the truth is, you know, I don't want an unhappy patient. I'm very comfortable with what I can do and results I can get, but I don't want an unhappy patient. And I want them to make the right decision for themselves. I'm there to guide them, to educate them, but it's their decision. They're the ones who need to make the decision if it's the right thing for them or not. And the other thing is I want everyone to know that I do get great results. I'm known for my results. Well, thank you for coming to the show. Great stuff. My great pleasure, Randy. My pleasure. And, and these photos are all on the website. Correct. And consultations free, no are charge. free. Yes. And, uh, well, well, good for you. And, uh, you know, I know we can't show the breasts and the lifting, and that's on the website as well. Yes, Okay, good. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you'd like to see this interview again online, you could go to our website and put in Dr. Sadrin. You'll find him there, or Mommy Makeover. You'll find him there. And if you'd like to comment about Dr. Sadrin on Twitter, just put hashtag The Wellness Hour. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.